Well, welcome to a new Harry's Garage video. And this one is gonna be my summary of 2022. The best cars I featured, the worst cars I featured, best moments. And then also some of the analytics you get from YouTube, which are just off the scale, what they offer. They can tell me exactly where you're watching from, ages, etc. And also the list of the most watched videos and the least watched videos for 2022, which gives me a guide of what sort of videos I should be doing for you. Now 2022 was quite a year. We did a number of trips abroad. I did the sand raiders with the bikes. I did a bike test as well and also those restorations and it's so great to have the Lancia Zigato back in the garage. Now I'm not going to go through all the analytics like I did last year in 21. I'm just going to quick headlines because a number of the things haven't changed. The age profile hasn't changed. Where you're watching from hasn't changed either no surprise uk is number one followed by the united states then australia canada and germany still there in fifth position which i'm very grateful for india is moving up the list now 1.4 percent of my views are from india i just love the way youtube is a global phenomenon and it doesn't seem to matter where in the world if you like cars etc you'll watch videos on youtube for which i'm very grateful now i have some particular favorites from this year but I think it's just useful to look at the analytics and just see which were the least popular videos of 2022. Five of the Zigato restoration videos were in the bottom 10. You did not watch that in great numbers, but those that did really enjoyed it. And my, you know, my worst video of all was part 12 with bodywork finished, the engine and gearbox go back in. It still did 115,000 views and it only went live October the 9th. So yeah, I know these restoration videos aren't the most popular and particularly so when you've got a slightly obscure car like the Lancia Zagato. But I was surprised also to see the Kuntash rebuild videos really aren't that popular. That's in ninth position, I think, yeah, 168,000 views thereabouts. Um, sustainable fuels is another one that doesn't seem to quite light up the audience. And we did that trip to South of France in the Project 7. Never popular. Whenever I feature the Project 7, views go right down, unfortunately, even though it's one of my favorite cars in the garage. Having said that, the Honda CBX bike test, that did reasonably well. Yes, it's in the bottom 10, but for a bike video for me, it's pretty good, 168,000 views. But what happens at the other end of the scale, which were the most popular videos on Harry's Garage in 22? First of all, no surprise really, the Jaguar XJ Coupe, big hit. And when I showed you just what it sounds like all run in, you just lap that one up and that did yeah, over 400,000, 440,000 views. The Pagani special, we've just done that Amira trip into Italy and back, went to Pagani, that's next on the list. New 22 Range Rover, every time I do a Range Rover video, they just get stats of views and this one was no different, it was just a comparison really with our car, see what you thought about that. That was in eighth. GT3 Touring, Next, on-road view, I really like that one as well. Spanish road trip at number six in the Porsche 930 Turbo S. I really enjoyed that trip. I'm not surprised it proved popular. Factory collection of the Lotus Amira. Magic moment for me. Just so different from collecting it from a dealership. Bentley Continental GT Speed Review. That was one of the first videos for 2022. Big numbers again, over half a million views. 911 GTS. Uh, that had followed on from my review of the 992 GT3, which I really wasn't sure about as a road car. GTS, interesting alternative. Having driven the GT3 Touring, that's the one for me, but I didn't know that at the time. And then uh, number two, Bugatti Chiron Pure Sport. Living with that car over a thousand kilometres was eye-opening. And my most watched video in 2022 only came out on December the 14th, so just over two weeks ago, and that is the Ferrari Porosango, their new SUV. Already in just two weeks, 871,000 people have watched that video. That will be a million in a couple of weeks. Quite extraordinary, the interest and intrigue. It's also probably one of the most commented on videos I've produced all year, nearly 2,000 comments, I think. Now, that's what the analytics say. But for me, 
I had my own magic moments and worst cars and best cars. Kick off with the, the, what I would describe as the worst car, or perhaps the most disappointing cars I drove in 2022. There's, there's a collection of three. I'd say the, oh, the Kingsley Range Rover, um, that modded one. There were some things, I, I, the car I wanted to like, but some of the modifications which were done by the particular owner who'd spec that car weren't to my taste. But the engine was strong and it was beautifully finished and it was obviously going to last a lifetime. How they'd restored the body was very impressive. Number two, that Ferrari SF90 coupe I had in. It had the Assesso Ferrano kit on it and I just didn't understand it. it. It felt too extreme. It was so quick and it had the handling pad that didn't seem to suit UK roads. I'm not going to use it on track. It had those bucket seats, it had the full harness, everything I don't really like to see on a road car and that one had it in spades. But it was an eye-opener that maybe we can have too much performance. I think that SF90 suffered from that. And number one, that BMW i4 M50. It looked like a regular three series. It had been enhanced by the M division, M50. It wasn't a true M car like an M3, an M4, M5, but it was enhanced. And I thought it was rubbish. I think it had no range, it had no steering feel, it was too heavy. And I just thought it was a very disappointing car. And if that is a pointer towards electric performance cars, well, count me out. Fortunately, there were some magic moments though during 2022. And the number three was actually taking the Amira off on that trip to Italy. It was a sink or swim moment, collect it from the factory, head out, how are we going to get on with it? And it got better and better the more miles we put under it, running it in, beautiful scenery in Switzerland, and then sort of coming alive in Italy once it was run in. And just nothing tells you more about a car than doing a trip like that over several days. And you live with it. <laughs> You're in it a lot of the time during the day. And it absolutely passed the test. Very close to that test, I have to also mention the 930S going to Spain incredible trip that was, open roads. Unfortunately the car wasn't quite run in, so I wasn't exercising quite as much as I perhaps could, but just showed me how, why Porsche 911s are so popular, they're sort of versatile cars, and even though it's a hyper performance car, very livable, very easy in that sort of GT role. Number two, well, I'm gonna say doing Sand Raiders, and particularly doing it with my son and a group of friends. To go over Morocco and see parts of Morocco I'd never seen and all off-road on these fabulous sort of classic Dakar bikes of the 80s and 90s. Beautifully run event. Um, I've signed up for 23 already uh, because I, how long am I going to be able to do it? I don't know. I, I ignore my age. I'm in my 60s. But just as a group of friends to do... It, it was so intense for those five days. It's all you thought about, off-road, incredible vistas, no mud or rain as we get in the UK, absolutely magic. And I hope that came across in the video. My number one moment though, was very easy to decide on. And that was the first time I saw my Lancia Zigato finished in its resplendent Rally Rosso paint and with a black stripe on it, just as I saw back in 1973. It's unrepeatable when moments like that happen and that absolutely lived up to all that pain through the two year restoration. Now, turning to my car of the year. <sighs> Hard to decide, but I'm going to put number three is the Lotus Amira. That first time I drove that press car down my testing bit of road and it lived up to expectations. This is what I wanted a modern Lotus to be like. Okay, it's got the Evora drivetrain that we've known before, but it's tried and tested. A B road sort of warrior, it's fantastic. And with the new interior, new design, hugely desirable. So the first time I drove the Amir, it really lived up to all I hoped it was going to be. Number two, I'm going to put the Porsche GT3 Touring. 
it was as surprising and as enjoyable as I found the GT3 regular uh, 992 disappointing. It looked so much better with that sort of finish around the front. Whatever reason, mine drove better on road than the white GT3 I had in before. And that engine and the way it sounds is ahead of 991 and being a manual as well just made it such an enjoyable car for how I would use that car. It was livable with, you just get to enjoy this motorsport engine in this very usable package and I can see why they're so popular. Number one though, Bugatti Chiron Pure Sport. To be able to do a thousand kilometers over, a, we had it about 10 days, you never tire this car. It's so easy to criticize the Chiron. It's, oh, it's too heavy, etc. It's got far too much horsepower, etc. The weight thing is interesting. It's around the 1900 kilo mark. Now, going back to that Maserati MC20, I noticed in Evo's car the year they weighed that car, it was 1700 kilos. So it's only 200 kilos heavier than the new Maserati MC20 all carbon tub V6. That thing's the Chiron's got a W16 engine in it and 1500 horsepower, quad turbos, etc. What you get to learn when you live with a car like that is beautifully, beautifully finished. Every detail you touch, it was just exquisite. The dash, the fact it didn't have that screen on board, how they had dual roll some of the switches in the dash. I had that issue, that engine light come on. The way the factory then could check the car remotely in, in this shed from Germany on a Sunday night, that's crazy level of uh, service behind the scenes and talking to Francois the owner of that car that's almost the bit he enjoys most about that car is the connection to the guys at the factory and how passionate they are for the product and how they look after as a customer experience he says it's second to none yes it's a very expensive experience but it's great that it actually lives up to that side as well and then I went up to the interior with it and then drove back and had probably my best drive in years coming back from Chester into North Wales, some of the roads I knew really well, and then down to Ryder, it was night. It's so nice to discover a car like that has fantastic headlights. And it was just magic. The roads were deserted, everybody was in bed, probably watching EastEnders, and we were out in this Bugatti Chiron, having an utter time of life. You didn't have to use all its performance, but you had that grumbling, intense sort of furnace of an engine that could deliver immense horsepower. And it was different to the power, say, with a Ferrari SF90, which is almost as quick. I think they're very, very close. The experience in the Bugatti is so much more enjoyable because it, it, you hear this guttural roar, the turbos building up to hurricane force, and there's a sort of pause before it's delivered, and it all sets off down the road. So it, it taught me that internal combustion is going to take some beating even when we move to the pure electric mode it's not all about the performance it's how it's delivered and how it makes you feel and the fact you just don't have to go 150 plus to enjoy the chiron you can enjoy it at 50 70 miles an hour made it all the better so that was my car of the year. I am extremely grateful to myself for letting me experience that car and just live with it for those 10 days, 12 days, whatever it was. So there you go, there's my summary of 2022. Some of the things for 23. Well, I'm hoping to do more of these sort of um, videos on some of the issues that we're all facing as enthusiasts. Why, like, why are cars getting so heavy? Is electric the answer? What are we gonna do about the charge network? Can you make an electric sports car? So sort of discussion pieces, I want to throw in amongst the regular road tests. So look out for some Thursday videos coming out going forward, particularly while the weather is so bad. Then also we've got some trips planned. I'm actually off in a couple of weeks to Saudi Arabia because I'm going to be following the Dakar rally. The last two stages, Audi have invited me over there. I've always wanted to see the Dakar for real. They're absolute heroes of mine. Anybody who takes part in that event, 
Uh, it's such a long event, it's already running at the moment. It's great updates on YouTube. You get it the next day of what happened the day before, going live each evening. So if you want to catch up with Dakar, strongly suggest watching that. And also there's some other trips we've got planned as well and how we're going to use them. Two things I'm going to just mention that have, uh, when I did the previous roundup, GR Yaris, it's still with us. The GR Yaris tends to live outside the house because we, it's our daily, my son uses it a lot. Nothing really to report in a year. It keeps on delivering. Um, it got service. It was quite expensive. It was about 280, 300 pounds to service it. I've had it nearly two years now. And I still think it's an absolute gem of a sort of hot hatch, call it what you will. Very usable. And also, everybody comments on this, which is the body of a 340R, Lotus 340R. Back 20 years ago, Evo, we had a 340R. I managed to put it into a little earth bank. It was a nothing accident, drove out, but had a crack in the body and the insurance company paid for a new body to be fitted. I thought they'd just repair it. You can see it top right, a little bit of damage there. Uh, and I said, well, if you're gonna chuck it in a bin, I'll have it. So I've always had this Lotus 340R body hanging around on the farm and that's hanging around there. I keep meaning to hang it up on there, but I don't, I don't think it's gonna get any further than that. And also in 2023, we should be doing the test of the F40 and F50. I know lots of you have commented on the weather is not suitable. You can probably hear the sort of storm that's going on outside at the moment. We'll wait for some better weather and then we'll take those two out and I can do videos on those two iconic Ferraris. I should also mention if you want to keep bang up to date, then you really follow me on Instagram at Harry's Garage Vids or on Twitter as well, same handle on there. If you'd known about that, that's where you would have learnt, like I'd sold the Lotus Esprit Turbo about two years ago. That was sold really to make room for the Amira, but actually helped me buy the Porsche 930S. Thank you so much for watching Harry's Garage during 2022. Lots more videos coming in 23. If you have enjoyed watching, please subscribe. So grateful, we're nearly at 600,000 subscribers now ping on notifications if you want to keep absolutely up to date. Thanks again for watching. See you again soon.